Welcome back to the Pacific Stage. Thank you all so much for joining us. We are here with our next session titled, How to Win at Modern Distribution, presented by Film Hub. It is my pleasure to introduce our moderator, CEO of Film Hub, Alan Descrignoli. Thank you so much, Alan. Thanks, Aaron. Um, awesome. We've got Greg here. I think we're just waiting for Michael to show up. We'll wait two seconds here. But uh, while we're waiting for Michael here to, to get pulled in the room, hi everyone. My name is Alan Descragnoli. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Film Hub. Uh, we're an online film distribution platform for distributors, sales agents, and filmmakers uh, to reach streaming services around the world. Um, Visio happens to be one of those, and we're very excited to have uh, Greg Barnard, their director of acquisitions here, uh, join us. Greg, uh, we'd love to hear a bit more about Visio and in your role, and uh, go from there. Sure thing. Hi, everybody. It's great to see you all kind of sort of online. Um, as uh, Alan said, I'm leading uh, content acquisitions here at Visio, uh, and uh, Visio is the number two uh, uh, number two uh, connected TV platform in in the US with over 14 million uh, active users per month. Um, what my job is, as I'm sourcing and uh, selecting content for all of our ad supported uh, experiences here, including our over 200 fast channels, as well as our, our uh, O&O uh, custom experiences <clears throat> that, that, that we're delivering via Vizio's data-driven curated channels. Those are fairly new to our platform. We just launched our sixth channel today. Very exciting for us. And we're able to curate um, channels around, around, around a certain genres there. So that's me. Hi, everybody. Awesome. Thanks, Greg. Uh, and we're also joined Gravitas Ventures. Michael's the president of Gravitas Ventures. Michael, can you please share a bit more about your company? You're on mute, you're on, you're on mute Michael. <laughs> oh. We're having technical difficulties, and we did go through like three checks of this. <laughs> the bottom at the bottom, Mike. There, uh, Michael, there's a bottom mic on button. Okay, we'll give Michael a quick second here. Um, uh, maybe I'll give a while. Michael's getting there. Um, I'll just go ahead and get it start, started and kicked off. Um, but uh, starting off with uh, everyone's you know, least favorite topic of the last two years, um, COVID. Um, COVID changed a lot of things in the streaming world. Um, you know, it's accelerated evolution of the supply demand cycle in streaming. Um, you know, Greg, how has you know, COVID and the associated effects with it changed your licensing strategy and whatnot at Vizio? Sure. Um, so, I mean, COVID really did not change our strategy all that much. Um, you know, it did accelerate things. We, we've all heard about that. There's a lot more viewing on platform, but, um, you know, we, we were always very, very focused in the ways that um, we're still we're still focused now. And what that means is, I mean, there's there, there was a big gap in fresh uh, production of content. We know that, right? It sent people uh, searching for new things to watch and create, and, and that created new habits as a um, result. During the, the uh, lockdowns, we saw a surge in streaming, um, which meant we just accelerated a bit some of the conversations that, that, that we were having to get more content up quicker, right? Because once you once you watch something, the idea is that you're going to want to watch the next thing. What What is that next thing? We want to be able to catch you on that, right? Um, but that surge has continued. Uh, it, it hasn't really, a, you know, a slow down for us. We're a very fast growing company. Um, just last quarter, we saw our uh, active accounts increase 43% year over year and our and our hours grew 22% uh, uh, a quarter over quarter. <clears throat> we now have more than 240 free channels um, across all all the genres, and we're seeing uh, bigger and bigger content coming our our way in this space. We've done deals with with, with uh, CBS, uh, Viacom, Warner Media, Annie, uh, AMC, etc. There's just there's this entire shift 
to streaming. And it, it's something that we've been planning on for a very long time. And now we're just start, we're starting to see it come our way even more. Um, and I, and I think that 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 the consumers are quickly expecting more from us as as a platform. So with so many options out there, um, it, it's important that we continue to add to our uh, offering and we ensure that what they're getting is new, fresh, has a familiar faces on it and um, and uh, able to access that very, very easily. And that's that's what I think we're we're really doing. That's that's what we're uh, really focused on. Awesome. Thanks, Greg. And Michael, looks like you have a microphone again. I would love to have you just quickly introduce uh, everyone um, and, and go from there. Sure. First of all, can you hear me? Yes. All right. <laughs> well, for the record, it said my mic was on for the entire time. So I'm, I'm learning this new platform as we all are. But it'd be great to be with everyone there in, in Santa Monica at uh, having a drink at the hotel bar or the Viceroy Hotel. But here we are today. Um, uh, so I, I'm at Gravitas Ventures. We are a film distribution company. Hopefully, I know a lot of you or you've heard of Gravitas. Um, we acquire finished films, feature-length films and documentaries and, and distribute them kind of throughout their windows. We do a lot of theatrical releasing on day and date theatricals, as well as then kind of move films through their windows. And, um, you know, for example, what Greg was talking about with, with their own channel, that is a new AVOD window for us, a new buyer, so to speak, on, on, on owned and operated fast channels. And so the, the world continues to evolve. Um, I suppose the other area that we're evolving into is, is what I call PVOD or premium video on demand. We've done three of those since the pandemic, kind of going back to your question about what has the pandemic done? That, that's a new business model that has emerged out of the pandemic. And it's, it's a fascinating one uh, for, for a lot of studios and a lot of distributors, including Gravitas, because it allows us to you know, do our core competency, which has always been video on demand for the last 16 years, and while still doing theatrical releases, but being very efficient in our marketing spends. Um, but uh, no, thrilled, thrilled to be here and, and, and talk about uh, all things distribution. Awesome. And Michael, talking about premium video on demand, right, this is an area that a lot of filmmakers think about, right? They're trying to make that decision as to, uh, you know, do they feel that their film could video on demand release how you know you guys are bringing on a couple hundred films a year how do you go through the decision process of deciding what films should go through a premium video on demand versus not and explain me just a little bit of the process also of what a, what a pvod release is yes i mean for, for us it became because of because of the pandemic i mean we had this film um you know in gravitas generally we do we release hundreds of films a year um but at a certain scale and in our corporate you know we we saw an opportunity to go bigger on a couple of releases and, and we tried to do that uh with this film last year called the secret dare to dream which is based on the ip um of the book and and the documentary which has been in the gravitas library for a long time called the secret um katie holmes and josh lucas and uh, we thought we could pump in you know millions of dollars in this and, and make it a sing as a theatrical release and we were all set we de-risked it we had some output deals and ready to go and here comes the pandemic and uh you know we were probably you know third or fourth behind scoob and trolls in shifting our release from a traditional theatrical release to a pure play premium video on demand release um i don't think we would have gotten the support to answer your question from from our you know our customers whether it was amazon or apple or comcast had we not put forth a, a major kind of p a spend or, or you know by, by our accounts um and what we've seen and then subsequently we've done two more but they've kind of been again a little bit by um by accident and the next film we did was our friend which was supposed to kind of be a platform release it was going to be well-reviewed film out of toronto and, and we decided that uh you know we had to pivot on this one too because we weren't going to be able to do the theatrical release the way we wanted to. We still released it theatrically, um, but but um, most of the effort was towards the premium video on demand. That was January of this year, and then this summer we took a film called Queen Bees, which was kind of an ensemble comedy with uh, James Caan and 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 Anne Margaret Ellen Burstyn, and we said, you know what, let's take a let's take the 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 budget on this one and elevate this film. And put the the requisite marketing dollars into this, and so it's it's kind of this. Um, to answer your question, you know, 
it's a balancing act. You're walking with uh, your partners out there saying, we believe in this film and we're going to put the resources behind it. And we want you to support this at a much higher price point for your customers. Um, going forward, though, you know, as we get out of the pandemic, hopefully, I think it's going to be interesting to eye films for both kind of PVOD and theatrical. And again, at Gravitas, we've always wanted to let kind of let the consumer decide how they're going to spend their dollars. And, and you know, you know, it's been written about the splits in PVOD are better than the splits in theatrical. We still believe in the in the theatrical movie going experience. And, you know, we've got our next film teed up in January to release in probably about a thousand screens. But it's going to be a 21 day window followed by PVOD. So we're experimenting as uh, as the world continues to, to evolve. Awesome. And how do you, you know, prints and advertising, you know, in theatrical versus PVOD, like, right, those can vary significantly. It's like where you spend your money, what are the channels you think about? How are you guys thinking about that? And like, what, how did you guys have to change your shift in, in process of, of thinking about, you know, P&A money? So, you know, part of P&A is, is an awareness campaign. And sometimes it's thought that you've got to do traditional television, traditional commercials to do an awareness campaign. Um, with, with, PVOD, we felt that you could be a little bit more specific in your spends as opposed to putting butts in seats, try to spend maybe with the platform, spend with Amazon, um, and, and, and also knowing that, hey, maybe someone's not going to rent the movie on Amazon, but everyone goes to sh Amazon to shop. So it's kind of two birds, with one so stone there. You can get an awareness campaign as well as uh, potentially a click through. Or, 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 you know, a, a tap through, however you'd say, um, to get that ultimate buy. Uh, but look, I think you, at the end of the day, you can just be more specific with digital media than you can trying to put butts in seats, which is, it's always challenging. Awesome. Cool. And, and Greg, on the, on the opposite end of that spectrum, right, we go through, you know, services that go into depth of catalog, right? You know, that aren't thinking necessarily about like, how do we drive to one exact title? How do we really personalize the experience and have a wide array of catalogs? So like, you know, you've got like the Netflixes on the world that are now saying, hey, we only support X number of films through, you know, services like Tubi and also increasingly Vizio going for depth of catalog. How do you guys kind of, you know, think about that and how do you, you know, Vizio think about what is the right path into like highly curated on one end of the Netflixes versus, you know, the other end of, you know, we want to have as wide of a catalog as possible. Right. So I wanted to backtrack just, just for a second. I think we jumped in a, a little quick here. Um, Vizio as a platform is different than Vizio as a TV, but, but we actually work together quite, quite well. And I, and I just wanted to make that clear. So. So Vizio has made TVs forever, right? We, we launched the, the SmartCast platform in, 20, in 2016. Think of this as a Roku or a Fire TV that's built in to our, to, our, to our sets. Every TV that goes out the door has this platform in it. So let's just start there because I think it puts us in a unique uh, position where Vizio owns the hardware, we own the software, and we own all the data right and that data is is fairly critical uh it's very critical to any of the work that we're, that we're doing um so to to go into the question that you're uh, asking me um it's really driven by data and you're you're going to hear that a lot but 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 we have so much data available to us we want to make sure that we're making good decisions with the data that that we have because it really eliminates for us as a platform where we're, where we're tasked with generating content experiences, not always producing content, but, but, but making content easy to find, uh, discoverable, accessible, right? And, and getting it to the right viewer, the right uh, consumer at, at the right time, that's absolutely critical to what we're doing. So to go to your question about um, the catalog, I'd say it's a combination of uh, curated, highly curated versus uh, a, a, a large catalog like what you see with Tubi. So we have a vast catalog of endless, uh, endless uh, entertainment options, right? We have curated um, uh, experience as, experiences as I, as I mentioned before. Um, we, we need to have the 
familiar faces and formats though that our consumers know and love and that's what's going to draw them into the service um and then we need to sub we need to supplement that with their next new favorite uh you know, a, you know, a piece of content that maybe they haven't seen yet. And we've seen this actually work tremendously well. Sorry, there's some there's some feedback here. Uh, tremendously well um, with a number of the campaigns that we've run on our platform. Again, we own all the marketing on our platform, and that's really powerful for us. And we've seen where certain uh, content has not has not had a lot in the theaters it's it's not maybe a you know a recognizable as a title in and of itself but it has some uh some creative that really works on our platform and i and i'd like to go a step further and say i think that the users uh that we have have actually grown accustomed to discovering content on on sets now right they've gone to the netflixes and the primes and the hulu and 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 all these different uh content aggregators and they they have they've made they built a behavior of discovering content so we're doing exactly that same thing but we're doing it from the platform side you turn your tv on uh, what do you see right but we're also guiding that right by using our data it's an informed approach where we can take a large uh, library of content that offers a breadth and depth to uh, consumers uh and and create a relevant contextual uh, you know contextual recommendation on what they like to watch because again, we have all the data from what they're watching on our platform as well as what as well as what they're watching on on a linear on a, on a linear t, uh, tv <clears throat> that enables us to build up a, a, a profile of our of our users we have we stream billions of hours right now through all different uh, business models svod avod free channels and, and and all that and we access all of that through our um our uh, smart cast right um <clears throat> so that's really where our focus is is really identifying can we get enough content in here that that really aligns with the key verticals and what our users are looking to watch and then once they do can we bring them along that customer journey to get them to that next thing and it's not it's not always going to be the biggest title that that we expect to see it's not always going to be Forrest Gump or stranger things but it's going to be something in line that that uh that associates and really you know is the next thing that we expect them to want to see and and again we've seen a behavior just fin fantastic for this and i and i have to thank everybody in this industry who's done that like a netflix and and a prime they built that up uh, that uh, behavior here awesome thanks greg i think it's, it's one of the most interesting things that we've noticed like even from from film hub's perspective is the you know the new aspect of film of Consumer discovery, right, is is really one of the most important things that we think about here. And consumers have really just changed the way that they discover content. It's it's uh, you know we've now replaced a recommendation of me telling Greg, hey, this might be something you'd watch. With you know a lot of it's been done by machine. You know this is the most likely that you're going. To um, and you know it changes that you know kind of social proof into more of a proof of you know. Googling what next is kind of interesting. And I think that's uh, something that's very important as you think about the, the breadth of catalogs. Um, so, so Michael, one thing on licensing, right, that has changed and evolved, right, is like we've seen like, let's say, for instance, let's take Netflix, right? You know, Netflix used to have eight to 9,000 titles available on their, their library. Um, they're now down to roughly about five or 6,000 as of the recent estimates. Um, this obviously means that a lot of, you know, Netflix is one of the, you know, more traditional upfront licensing uh, entities. So just by, you know, showing that it's, you know, a number, the number of upfront licenses is beginning to reduce in favor of revenue share based deals on services like Vizio, like Tubi, like IMDb. Um, even a lot of some of the subscription services are now moving towards more revenue share based deals. How does that, you know, change your business model, Michael, and how you think about uh, licensing of films? Sure. No, I, I think you're right. Um, some of the more traditional platforms have, have kind of scaled back, you know, the number of films and the amount they want to pay for fixed fee licensing. And, and one of the key examples here is 
you know, we used to be able to do on certain films, you know, global SVOD licensing to a platform um, for, you know, multiple six figures. And now it's, it's kind of like, we still want that film, says the platform, but we want it for not two years. We want it for six months or 12 months. And we only want English language territories and we only want to pay X. And that becomes challenging, you know, because, you know, we, we're willing to go out and acquire films for as much as, you know, we think that they're worth and the market will bear. And we believe in films, but, um, you know, you have to have a new playbook um, for, for a new reality that is, that is rev share um, in, in, in some cases. I mean, and, and that's okay, though. It's also very exciting because what we're seeing here is that AVOD and, and fast channels, it's like kind of like what's old, is, you know, like when I grew up, I had to watch, you know, I had to go watch ad ads and I had to change the channel and consumers are, are, are gravitating back to that. It happens to be not over, over the air or over cable, but it's an OTT play and it's, it's, it's breathing new life, you know, into our library where you know, we have a lot, you know, almost 3,000 independent films, many of which, you know, if you put them in front of the right person at the right time, it feels like a new new movie because they haven't seen it yet. And so that's fine for us. Um, but it, it is still striking that happy balance. I mean, oftentimes, you know, look, each one of our films, every new release is going to get a chance at a pay one deal, whether it's with Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, HBO, Stars, Showtime, you name it. They're still going to get a chance. But if that offer isn't coming in at the right value for the period, we're happy to go non-exclusive and, and do deals with the likes of Vizio or Tubi or Pluto. And and Vizio, you know, I mean, Greg's spot on. He's, they've been a great partner. We've got Gravitas Movies, you know, a, our fast channel playing there. And we came to Vizio. We said, hey, Vizio, we've seen this one particular film, this kind of horror thrill film do very well. And they said, hey, give us some artwork and we'll feature you guys kind of going into this. And, and they did. And that's very helpful too. And it's just kind of, again, breathing new life into some, some older films that, you know, you hadn't seen pop in a while. So it, it's exciting. And yeah. can, I, can I just add, add to that? And my, uh, Michael, you're, uh, you're absolutely right. What, what we're essentially able to do here as a platform, and, and you see this at Roku and you see this, you know, other, other places it is we can curate content forward. And when you turn your TV on, which we all have to do before we watch Netflix or prime or anything like that, you turn your, your TV on, you're, you're getting, uh, Front, front and center, something that you that you haven't seen before. You have a creative assets that will draw you in. It, it's it's a banner with uh, Dwayne Johnson on it, but you don't know what that is. Um, it's our essentially our uh, top ten from uh, Netflix, right? And and that really, as Michael said, it generates a, an opportunity here to create a discovery and um, and, and show somebody something new. Um, we just got to get them to try it. And, and that's been, I, like I said, really exciting because the behavior is there, the uh, expectations are, are there. And we're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of a movement, especially when you have, a fam, you know, a familiar faces in it. Awesome, Greg. And I think like one of the things that like, you know, we, to go one of Michael's points, right. With the, you know, decreasing cost of a lot of these upfront licenses and the increase in the AVOD revenue that's coming and, you know, kind of revenue share based deals. The hardest thing now becomes the, you know, decision of saying, hey, do I take, you know, bird in the hand better than two in the bush and take this up front or do I give it a chance on these revenue share based deals? And more often than not, I think, you know, what I, you know, Film Hub sees as, as well as a lot of distributors see is that, you know, that it is a lot of times worth it giving the chance. Um, you know, because if you, you know, there's a reason why a streaming service only wants to pay one upfront fee. Um, they think they can make more money. And so it's a constant, you know, battle on each side. And so I think it's a important thing that I think, you know, filmmakers need to kind of re-educate themselves on um, because they they hear the, the story of the deal of, oh, XYZ was sold for this or XYZ got this license up front. And those deals are, you know, they're, they're kind of, you know, tales. Um, and, you know, sometimes they do happen. Um, but a lot of times now it is important for filmmakers to realize that revenue share, you know, can be very helpful. Um, and so, so within.
you know, one of the interesting things as we think about this, um, you know, and Michael, you know, is like you guys work with, you know, as you said, a couple hundred films per year, right? And also across many different services, everything from Tubi to IMDb to Hoopla to Vizio to Roku. You know, obviously one of the hardest thing has become, you know, asset management, um, you know, and in making sure that you're available and can deliver these quickly to, you know, streaming services around the world. Um, you know, what are some of the things that you guys are doing at Gravitas to help, you know, evolve in this new world where it's no longer, you know, just delivering to a DVD release or just delivering to a theatrical, like one location. It's now, you know, hundreds of streaming services and instances. How do you guys kind of think about that as you evolve in, in your strategy? Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's a it's a great question. You know, some of it's still the same and we still are, you know, we're going to look at this. But we still will release a DVD and Blu-ray on each film, but it's going to be manufacturer on demand in most cases. We still find that our filmmakers like that. And if we can do it in a cost effective manner, it's still worth it to do it that way. And, and that remains the same, you know, kind of the core transactional video on demand customers, regardless of where you, you watch it as a consumer, whether you watch it on Amazon or cable VOD or iTunes, those remain the same. We'll continue to deliver there. But you are right that in terms of like new platforms popping up, you've got to be ready to deliver, in our case, a thousand movies at a time. And so, you know, in terms of, you know, getting our library out what we've done now is kind of balance load the library across multiple ways to get it out there because sometimes you can get a log jam on one delivery mechanism into a platform and you've got to be able to say you know what if you can't take it through x we'll come through y um you've got to work that out you know um great example is is uh peacock we've got a great relationship with them over at nbc universal and they licensed a ton of films from us but all of a sudden they took on and, and I understand that like WWE content took in all these assets. So, so independent films and documentaries kind of, you know, were behind that for a period, but we were able to work around because we had another way that they were taking ingestion faster. So that's what we're kind of doing, we're trying to future proof our distribution mechanisms. And, and Alan, you know, we work with you too at Film Hub. We've got titles over there because sometimes it says go and you're the fastest mechanism to get there. You know, we, even though we're 16 years into it, we haven't lost the entrepreneurial spirit. And it's like, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a, a gold rush now in, in AVOD. And you've got you've to be there. And, and we know that when our content gets up, our content's going to perform because we've had this um, acquisition mentality for, for, for many years now. That we want the most commercial content we can find. You know, when I go to the film festival, I tell my acquisitions team, I say, I, I also like foreign language content or art house content in my personal life sometimes. But I said, that doesn't always sell as well. I said, I want the audience award winner as opposed to the critics award winner. And that's kind of been our mentality as a company to try to return, you know, the greatest dollars to our, our, our filmmakers. And it makes me happy when we can get overages as fast as possible. Awesome. And Greg, you know, fr from your side, you know, hearing the pains of on the distribution, uh, you know, uh, getting assets to you. You guys also have the fun problems of, you know, receiving assets from hundreds of different content providers. How do you think about that and how do you solve those issues? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> I don't really want to talk about the technical issues as much. Uh, it's not really my area, but um, I mean, we, we try to we try to uh, establish a um, a, uh, a tech spec that makes it um, easy for our, our 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 providers to uh, deliver and we try to focus in on the on the content we think can make the most impact in the shortest amount of time so while i can't you know i can't do deals with a hundred people at uh at uh, one time we will we will face things and and we will work those the those things out because again you know we we are very focused on um uh curating to looking for and again we want to capture them once they've watched that last episode of that uh, of that uh, last show so um one of the ways that we do that uh which was mentioned here is we work with uh with a, with a, a film hub for, for example where the t tech specs are, are are streamlined and uh and i and i uh, uh, delivery is quite quick 
um, because we'll have a number of things that come up, stunts on our platform, new content uh, opportunities. At times, unfortunately, we see things get uh, withdrawn from our uh, platform. But we, but we have to keep, again, driving forward on those moments for, for our platform. And if, and if we don't have the right content at, at the right time, it really is a, 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 a problem for us. Awesome. Um, I'm going to turn into a question from the audience. And uh, Regina Fisher has asked, um, when selling a completed feature film, most offers are profit share, but no upfront and no guarantees. How can we be sure we get some significant money out? I think this is a problem that lots of filmmakers, and I'm sure you get asked on a ton of times, Michael, on a weekly basis. Um, how do you answer this question to your filmmakers? Yeah, I, I mean, right. I mean, I suppose to a certain extent, you're writing it as the sale, as, as if you're the sales agent or if you're the producer trying to deal with distributors directly, you're trying to run a, you know, a, a auction process. But I guess one thing I would say is, is look at the totality of the circumstances. And, you know, we're not going to try to give you I mean, estimates. We're not going to inflate estimates over after 16 years to try and bring your, your film to us. What I've learned is that when I do a deal with a filmmaker, I'm entering into a marriage for 10 to 20 years. And I'm going to try to be honest with you up front. And I've got filmmakers that will come to me and say, you know, what did you think of that documentary? It was, it was amazing that we sent you. It was amazing, right? Said, yeah, it was amazing. Said, we spent a million dollars in that film. I said, I have to be, you know, if you give me the film, you know, I'm telling you right now, you're going to lose money because there's no way I'm going to return a million dollars to you on that film, you know, in this market. I just, the film's not going to bear that much. And, but if you understand that, we're going to be a great partner because we're going to get out far and wide. We're going to report on time. We're, we're fair and honest and, and the rest. Um, so it's always a challenge. I mean, look, you know, what we try to do sometimes if people want a little bit more MG, we might ask for a few more points up front. Um, but we try to be, you know, as fair. And if it's a film where the expectations far outweigh our sensibilities or our experience, we'd rather pass on the film. Because, again, you got to jump off on, on the right foot. Um, we understand that, um, you know, investments have been made in the film. Uh one of the things that we're able to do sometimes is partner with some of the customers that I mentioned tonight already. And we know that they might be in for, you know, you've already, your sales agents already has a, has a warm and fuzzy that X company will license this for a certain amount. Um, but that's only going to handle one specific, uh, you know, piece of, of the distribution. Maybe it's just the subscription video on demand. Well, how are you going to make money on theatrical? How are you going to make money on, transactional video on demand, on EST, on DVD, on AVOD, that's where Gravitas can come in and, you know, sometimes absorb that deal and, and get you the money faster, quite candidly, because these terms that the, that they're paying are not all that favorable necessarily. You know, you know, quarterly over the term over a three-year deal, that's 12 payments. That's not getting your, your money real fast or, or, or providing your investors with a great deal of confidence. So Gravitas steps in a lot of times in those, in those instances. Um, uh, oh, and so I, you know, a couple things that are interesting, you know, and this is, uh, you know, curious to ask this on, on both sides, um, you know, Greg, you know, filmmakers and distributors and sales agents, you know, when they, de they deliver to, you know, VOD, you know, catalogs and, you know, people like either, you know, SmartCast system or Visio as an application within SmartCast, um, you know, one of the things that becomes hardest is discovery. Right. And it's like finding that right film, finding that next right piece. How do you, you know, when you talk to, you know, people that are, you know, pushing content to Visio, how do you make sure that they feel like they, they know their title isn't just going to be a number as one of 5,000 titles, 10 in Visio? How do you kind of, you know, approach that? Sure. Uh, so again, you know, we're, we're very focused on not getting into that, that game. Um, we know that the, the time it takes, the uh, effort it takes, and the expense it takes to get us content, get it here, get it here timely, and to do a deal, um, it's quite a cumbersome. And our, our goal here is we never want to go, we, we are not focused on going as deep as some of the other uh, members in the um, 
other platforms in this business. We 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 want to focus on a more uh, cu a more curated set, but a broad set, right? And our goal is to generate uh, collections of content around uh, a series, uh, a moment, uh, a vertical. What I mean by that is, can we generate a a true crime a vertical on our platform and curate that forward to the user that wants to watch that all the time. I, I've told a number of folks here when I'm looking at content, I rather have um, two really good series um, all seasons than 10 seasons one and two. Right. And, and because that can be that gives me an opportunity to create a collection on our platform get a user into it and get them st stuck on it, right? Get them to watch it and continue to watch that, um, watch that uh, entire series. And, uh, you know, so that's how we want to support user, uh, our uh, content providers. I would also say, which Michael has mentioned earlier, is get us better, better creative. Uh, let's, let's stay on top of the uh, creative assets that are working and let's get rid of the ones that don't. We have seen three to four X growth in a number of channels, uh, actually, when we ping them and said, your creative is just not intriguing enough. And, and we've seen this kind of, our you know, our creative work for us. And then they're, they're growing three, three and four X. So it's about working with our content, uh, providers and aligning the content that we do get around those particular moments on our platform. And again, that's all data driven for us. Awesome. Cool. And Michael, same general question to you. This is, you know, people always ask, how do I make sure I'm not just a number in a distributor catalog? Yeah. Well, just first on, on that last point, Greg, I'm glad to hear that we just added some horsepower to our creative team. Literally. Look, so look, We've had various people in marketing over the 16 years at Gravitas. Sometimes they're very clued in on doing artwork. Sometimes we take it from the filmmaker. Sometimes we use a vendor in between. What we've done though now is that I was having, so I kind of, among many things, including releases, releasing wires. Sorry, if you looked, I was distracted. I was releasing a wire by 6.30 for, for, for Gravitas, which we had to do to pay a filmmaker. Um, so you wear a lot of hats, but really I, I'm really responsible for sales and, and you know, um, all sales but what we're seeing now is that we need to be more um, aggressive and and forward leaning with our partners see what kind of user interfaces they have and say who's doing best practices there so now we've hired a, a young a young woman who's coming on our team purely to run kind of creative for the sales team which we've never had only usually we take the assets that are already produced but now we want to produce our own assets to put our best foot forward um, whether it's for a promotion that you're doing around holidays or something we just did around horror, it really, that's, that's what the distributor can do. And, 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 and that's how um, I think we're being impactful with not just Vizio, but Plex or Roku or Redbox, you, you name it, because that's, right. that's really where the rubber meets the road. Right. Um, and I, and I say on that, like, come bother us. I mean, you know, if you're one of 50 uh, content providers, make sure that we know your name. Right? right. I mean, don't call us every day, but uh, but, you know, stay, stay on top of us. And and the best partners for us are ones that have come and said, we're doing this in January on our fast channel. And we and here's some, uh, you know, a creative that is that we think is really going to work. And it's really cool and exciting. We would not know that otherwise. As much as I love this content, I can't watch 220 channels, 240 channels all day long. Right. We all day jobs. We got to sleep, too. So, uh, you know, come tell us what you're working on, what's exciting for you. And we're going to do the same. Right. You yeah. you sent us some some stuff we say well you know we've seen this working or that creative has worked for us it's action based and it's a short clip video that works or this one with a major talent has worked you know this diy content it really works when we did it like this before like, we have all those uh you know those um 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 insights here right and we we want to be able to use that and then take that and uh, target them to the people that we know are going to watch it too. So that's how we can work together quite, quite well. Awesome. Uh, Good, Michael. But, 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 you know, to, to your, to your question, look, we get it. You know, every film that, that someone's made, it's, it's their baby and they've, they've spent their time on it. Um, when, when you, you come to Gravitas though, you get the benefit of our scale and our relationships and our ability to actually get content onto platforms because, you know, we, we, 
over time we develop a trust with these platforms and say, you know what, you really need to take this set of content for this stunt. And everyone's busy and they'll say, hey, you know, Gravitas knows their own content better than we do. And we've been in business with them for X number of years. And this looks like um, something that we can absolutely participate in. Um, but the other thing is that not all content works on all platforms. I mean, look, Microsoft Xbox is not a great home for, I mean, we sell documentaries there. Um, they do okay, but it's really the genre products that do better there. And so I'm, when I'm talking to that exec at Xbox, I'm not gonna be pushing my docs so, as much as I am going to be pushing stuff that works for them. Um, so, you know, th that, that's what we're trying to do every single month as we bring it out and, and we look and see what's the platform promoting and then what can we promote? And we've also built in now these kind of like built in gravitas stunts, if you will, that we can share and bring and say, you don't have to do it, an entire gravitas new year, new you catalog, but here are 15 films that would work for this. And you should think about this as uh, a catalog that you're going to be offering. Awesome. Super cool. Um, so, so one of the things that the film, the audience is asking, we're hearing a lot in different versions is people saying that they're new to feature production, but they keep hearing it's a good idea to have distribution figured out, um, you know, prior to financing or in conjunction with financing. Um, Michael, what are your thoughts on this and how do you, how do you approach this when you get a young, uh, new filmmaker, um, uh, you know, coming to you? Yeah. I mean, we'll take it on an ad hoc basis. I mean, we do write letters of intent to distribute if if we think that we will actually distribute the picture and and that can be very easy if it's a pro producer that we've worked with before um they say look we're trying to wrap up our financing here can you give us a letter you know we'd love to work with you again it's not a guarantee that we're going to pick up the picture or they're actually going to come to us with the with the film but it's 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 something that we can do to help move the process along um you know i i think that there and we are moving a little bit further upstream. It's not been our, our skill set necessarily to pick things up at the script stage or, or, or even an early rough cut stage. We really want to see a, a finished picture in many cases, but we are, as we're targeting some bigger films, moving a little bit further upstream for certain projects. Awesome. Cool. Um, Greg, one of the things that we, we've chatted about uh, a couple of times now is you know, one of the biggest things that we look at, like the old CPMs of cable, right? We're in the 40 to $50 in CPMs, right? And as we've moved to the new, you know, fast and digital world, those CPMs have been become depressed into kind of, you know, you know, in, in, on good services in the 20 to $25 range, you know, we've been seeing, um, you know, what do you think about, you know, getting that CPM as a service and for your, your channels, your, your content providers, how does Vizio think about how do you begin pushing that up towards the old traditional, you know, cable dollar amounts that we've seen? And, and how do you think about that as Vizio? Sure. So, no, this is not my area of, um, of, uh, of uh, expertise. We have a great uh, ad sales team that does a lot of this work. And I think uh, every platform is trying to figure out how to get, a C, you know, a CPMs up especially considering I believe we have better data on our side, on our platform than we've, than we've ever seen. Um, in a traditional uh, TV days, we count every eyeball. And I think that, uh, I think that uh, attribution that we have and that we're gonna continue to have and that we're going to have, uh, excuse me, in the future is gonna be better and better than what we've ever seen in TV. There is a lag in the uh, transition of those ad dollars right right now um we know that there was a lot of ad money in tv those got to make their way over i think we're under indexing on ad spend versus a uh, viewership now um and they're going to make their their way over in addition to that um i think that uh the proliferation of sponsorship and sponsored hubs the ability to create a dynamic uh experience on the platform go back to what I was talking about, how we can bring content to our, our home screen, we can curate it and we, and, and we can do that with a brand. That's really powerful um, for a brand as well as for a discovery for a user. And um, that's something you could, you could not do as dynamically in old uh, TV days, right? Um, you could put a title card in, in content, you can own the first spot in an ad pod, which we can do as well, but you, you can also create an experience now 
on our platform, a carve out in certain ways, and you could target that um, that uh, that uh, experience as well. <clears throat> so I do think that the, C the CPMs will come up. Um, I, I I expect those to happen over time, and it's going to happen with um, the transition and the uh, the uh, the uh, distribution of new and better and bigger content as well. So what I've seen in the fast space is we're seeing much better content than what than what we saw six years ago, right? Where we're getting brand new content and breaking news content. You see that uh, Tubi is producing new content every month now, right? It's brand new content. And it's really exciting to see how this world is starting to grow because every, I won't say every platform, but I can tell you for a fact that a few of these platforms like ours and Roku or whatever it is, the most search term is free, right? People are looking for free options. They'll, they go to their Netflix, they'll go to uh, HBO to watch whatever it is that they're going to watch. But on a Tuesday night, on a Sunday uh, afternoon, they're looking for options to watch free content somewhere. It's a very high search term. So our content providers understand this. And as the content keeps getting better and better, I think the CPMs will actually flow, flow with it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Greg and Michael, we're, we're coming up on our time here. Um, I want to say thank you both for, for attending this panel. Um, any, any last kind of comments or things you'd love to say? Um, you know, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'll say a couple things because um, I saw some other, other uh, questions in here. Um, documentary features, um, we do see a lot of uh, opportunity there as long as they fall into the genres that 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 are really working for our users right so look at true crime look at travel um look at things uh again we can you we can use our data to uh really uh, target content and on the documentary uh, feature side can we can we uh align those around a particular genres um beyond that again it's a very exciting experience here i think we have we are on the the forefront of what's what's going to happen next fast channels are the new uh new uh tv i firmly uh, believe that and though the, those are going to grow again the proliferation of avod uh and the and the um the uh the preference and the um the requirement of a lot of our users for free content that's going to continue to grow that that uh, opportunity and it's going to scale and with scale you have great opportunities um to do fantastic and brand and brand new things as well so uh it's an exciting space um it's a growing space and i just say everybody kind of hang on it's coming awesome thanks greg michael any any closing thoughts from your side no i mean look there's always going to be more movies made every single year than there were the year before as, as but there's new platforms and new opportunities as well and just i think it's a great place to come to a, the afm or or other places to kind of keep a your finger on the pulse of what's going on but i think greg's absolutely right i mean whether it's vizio or redbox or tubi or roku or pluto or you name it they're going to have their o and o channels and those oh no channels you haven't heard of them now but you're going to hear about them and they're going to be new places for distributors like gravitas to sell content to um you know it, it won't surprise me if if you know vizio has something the equivalent of you know a major pay tv network years from now uh, or a few years from now where we're doing pay one deals and, and they're sitting there so you know it, it's just incumbent upon us um and, and i you know to, to the filmmakers out there keep making great movies at the right price and and keep paying attention here um this is all we do at gravitas is to kind of stay in this space and make sure that we're, we're monetizing content as best as we can and i think that you know we're going to continue to do that and stay on top of it and happy to talk to anybody and anyone can submit their film to us awesome awesome well greg and michael thank you so much for 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 coming here um, I had a couple of questions of people asking also what Film Hub does. And for those that want to stick around, I'm happy to share a little bit more information and, and demo you um, as well as part of this. Um, but Greg and Michael, big thanks for, for joining us. Um, and those that can stick around, um, 
let's uh i'll go ahead and share some more information here in a second pleasure thank you guys awesome thanks um cool so um so a couple people here have asked for a little bit of an overview of film hub kind of in what we do um so i'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen here um so you can actually uh get a i'll go ahead and give you a little bit of an overview so film hub what we are is actually a distribution platform used by distributors sales agents and filmmakers um, to reach streaming channels like vizio like plex like tubi um, we're used by distributors like gravitas as well as a solution um, to help you know reach a film's full potential um, we're you know a bit of our, our founding history so founded by uh, myself and klaus Badelt. Uh, klaus is a world-renowned composer behind pirates of the caribbean gladiator Ali, um, over 100 films to his name, um, is famous for innovating a lot in the composing process here in, in Hollywood. Um, my background is a bit more on the technology side, um, having worked at companies like Intuit, Square, and the Cash App, which you may use. Um, and Klaus and I have joined forces to build Film Hub. And so, you know, what are some of the faces that, you know, challenging it, that we just heard about from, you know, Michael and Greg at, at, at Gravitas and Vizio? Things like asset supply chain management, you know, uh, a distributor like Gravitas uses us because they have 3000 titles. It's hard to manage assets across text tracks, videos, images, all of those. Um, and then people like Greg have, you know, very specific delivery expectations. They want metadata in a certain format, an XML format. That's probably not something that most filmmakers know or even distributors know. And that's why they utilize Film Hub for this. Um, collecting royalties from you know streaming services around the world becomes very difficult. These are businesses that have somehow you know sometimes there's you know thousands of streaming services um, you know that they have to collect from, um, and that's one of the things that Film Hub does is handle royalty collections. Um, also, each report that different streaming services sends are completely different formats. How do you normalize and automate that so you can pull it into your accounting software, per report back to your producers? Uh, also within that. Um, rights management, you know, how do you make sure that, you know, the, each streaming service is obeying the rights that are contractual to them. And also, as we look at it, just of course, you know, the challenge of the distribution is there are now thousands of streaming services. There's no way one person can maintain relationships with thousands of streaming services. And if you're not on one streaming service, you're missing out on potentially finding the users of that streaming service. Similar to the old world of kind of what I, you know, deem a theatrical distribution, uh, where the you know number one indicator of success is the number of screens you're on weekend one, you know all of a sudden if you're not on you know thousands of screens, aka in today's world thousands of streaming services, you're missing out on opportunities. Yes, there's a you know majority of people are on some of the larger streaming services, but there's a huge audience now that are in you know the long tail of streaming services. Um, and so, what is the reason that people are using Philbot? asset supply chain, quick, fast licensing, um, and transparent reporting and payments. And how do we work? Very simple process. Um, as a filmmaker, distributor, or sales agent, it's the same process. You upload your, your master files, video, trailer, text, artwork, directly at filmhub.com. Everything is all in browser. Um, we perform a review of your assets to make sure that your, your titles are correct and that they meet the requirements of the streaming services. There's no upfront cost for these services. Um, we actually, you know, traditional encoding houses will charge you 500 to 1,000, $2,000 to review and QC your assets. We do all of that for free. Um, and then our, we make you available and our software automatically markets you to the streaming services that your title is a strong fit for. Um, we are a very data-driven company. Um, we, you know, use machine learning algorithms um, that go through everything, climbing your text tracks through images and scenes, figure out which services that they, it's a good fit for. And then our channel buyers, um, you know, when they license your title, um, we they're typically up on that service within a few weeks. Um, and the nice thing is we don't have to negotiate a deal by deal uh, basis. We negotiate one upfront deal on these revenue share based deals, which you've heard now are some of the most important and up and coming deals. Um, and then we all we have to do is add the title once the uh, channel licenses it and we can get you uh you know into that deal um and then we make our money on the back end as a streaming as a streaming as a platform and we receive 80 percent of the revenues or you receive 80 percent of the revenues with us taking a 20 percent revenue share 
So a flat 80-20 split for our filmmakers it ends up being very transparent as we can only make money once the, once the filmmaker makes money. Um, we've worked with everything from major you know, productions um, like Cryptopia, which is the foremost documentary in Bitcoin, through Square One, a top Michael Jackson documentary, Still Breathing, starring Brandon Fraser, Joanna Going, The Attic with Elizabeth Moss, Forget Me Not, one of the top 10 iTunes films uh, in horror, um, including documentaries like Back in Time, distributed by Gravitas on Film Hub, um, and major fest festival winners um, that have been through you know, everything. Uh, we also work with over uh, 100 streaming channels now throughout the world and everything from Apple TV and Roku channel through small local, you know, regional players getting going throughout the world. Um, so that's a quick overview of Film Hub uh, and what we do. Um, and uh, would love to open it up to some questions that people have. Um, if not, I can also kind of run through a very quick demo of, of, the, uh, of the platform itself. Um, but if people want to, if they have questions, you can go ahead and ask them in the Q&A area. Um, and uh, we will go ahead and uh, I can keep going on the demo here for you. Um, so within that, um, here's a quick look at what it looks like as a filmmaker on this platform. Um, you go ahead and this is what it logs in. So you'll he, see here on the left are all the titles that you have. So this account has Pirates of the Caribbean, Gladiator, Back Nine TV series, a cooking show. Um, here on the right is where you see where, which channels have licensed your titles. Um, this is just fake dummy data. Um, but let's go ahead and I want to show you how simple this process is. You go ahead and add a title. And let's say we're actually, we're going to add Gears of Steel here. It's a cool uh, animated short. Um, let's go ahead and write animated short um, focused on uh you know just on apocalyptic I think the apocalyptic end of world obviously a better description probably than that um and let's get, good thing i've got my grammarly here fixing my horrible writing here um and then we just go ahead and create a single work and here is actually where you begin seeing you're actually going to go ahead and upload all of your data and here on the right, we have all of our asset requirements that you can actually look at as you're going. Um, and so you can list out and see all the assets that are required. You have full you know, help centers, uh, you know, information on how to list a single work. Um, um, and sorry, one second, it looks like I'm having one thing. Oops. Here we go. Apparently someone wasn't able to see. Hopefully it's working now. Um, and, uh, then you can go ahead and, you know, begin adding your images. So let's search, I'm going to search where I've got all my images for Cures of Steel. Cool. Cures. Oh, sorry. And I've actually just lost my images. Sorry, one second. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and I actually unhook my hard drive, which it has all the files. But anyways, um, let's go ahead and so you can see here where you add video. Um, looks like people still are not seeing my screen. Not sure what's happening here. Try this again. Hopefully this is working. Um, is screen sharing working? Okay. Um, apparently screen sharing is not working for a lot of people. So I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and leave this open for a couple more minutes of questions. If anyone has any questions. Um, and also, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in the chat a link where you can actually sign up for a true Zoom demo. I guess it is working now. Um, okay, never mind. <laughs> um, so here's where you can upload your video files. Um, and then let's go ahead and say here, if you wanted to see here um, where the video files are, um, you can hear, you know, full ProRes 422 HQ files that we want. Um, we give you, you know, details of like, you no know, cladding, no bend 
blended frames. And you know, if you're not an editor, these are all things that your editor will know about. Um, and you know, we talk about the audio codecs that we need, all of your channel layouts, um, and all those instructions in a super easy uh, to understand format here. You do obviously need a little bit of just technical knowledge. That's why I always recommend working with your editor to get this um, these files correct. Um, and then, of course, text tracks. We do require closed captions, which is one of the standard uh, deliverables now for most streaming services. Um, a lot of people, you know, as it, it used to be a standard needed for you know accessibility reasons, and but now it's you know becoming more and more common. About 40, 30 to forty percent of a lot of, of people on certain services are now using watching captions, even if they're not hard of hearing. And it's just because they've become used to it, and it's something that people are beginning to like more and more. Um, and that's kind of you know the basics of, of how Film Hub works. We then, uh, once you're uploaded, you would just go ahead and save and submit. We would go through our listing review process to make sure that your assets are correct. And then as your film begins receiving reports, um, we'll actually upload those directly for you to view here so you can see how your title is doing by month. Um, so this is just fake dummy data. But you can see here it's spiked in here in this time. Um, and you can actually even get full details into you know the light the which which you know how it's on a line by line item basis on the different streaming channels and how it's performed um and all that data comes through um and it's all available at and and view here um the basic overview um any questions uh from the group here or any uh thing i can help with Leave it here. Got a couple things in the QA. Let me see here. I have a question here. Should we as filmmakers expect to pay a fee up front to a distribution company to get the film ready to put on platforms? Um, or is the fee always taken out prior to the revenue split? It's a different. It's something you have to look at in each of your distribution contracts. Um, every distributor is slightly different in this. Um, Film Hub does not charge any fee to filmmakers up front, but there are there are distribution companies that will charge that fee to you. Um, so definitely make sure that's something you look at because those fees can be expensive. Um, if they're not capped, you know, some distribution companies will charge as much as five, ten thousand dollars to prepare assets and deliverables. Um, they could charge you to prepare artwork. Um, those are all things that you have to look at uh, within your contract. Um, Shannon asked, do we take shorts? Yes, we do take shorts. Um, shorts generally uh, don't monetize quite as well, but it is a great way to get your feet wet and learn how to use platform. Um, Carolina has asked, what territories does your service distribute in? Uh, Film Hub distributes uh, in services in to all, basically all corners of the globe pretty much. Um, so you can actually, uh, in our listing of titles, uh, or in our platform, you'll be able to go by channel, and you'll be able to see each of the channels that they work with. So Airy, for instance, distributes worldwide. Um, IMDb TV is United States only currently. Um, uh, Apple TV, worldwide. Um, Caliber Video, United States. So uh, you get a full listing of that directly on the platform, which is really nice. Um, uh, David asked, do you automatically deliver to open platforms that don't require a pitch, such as iTunes, Google, and Amazon? Our goal is to get as many films up on as many streaming services as possible. So what we do is we use data to see which films are performing well and where they prepare well. So if your film, according to our data, is going to pair well on Apple TV based upon who is performing well there, we will automatically deliver it there. Um, that is definitely something. Um, Carolina asked, do we demand any type of exclusivity? Uh, no, we actually do not. Uh, Film Hub works non-exclusively, uh, which is really important for filmmakers, unlike traditional distribution, where they sign away the rights for anywhere from 7 to 10, 15, 20 years. Um, with Film Hub, the rights always remain with our filmmaker. Um, you, can, um, you can even say no to deals. You can say, hey, I don't want to be up on the service anymore. You can remove your film at any time. Our goal is to really put you in control of your films. We believe that filmmakers shouldn't have to sign over their rights. There's a reason why uh, you know, studios and distribution companies want to hold on to rights. They see that as value. Um, well, yes, it's valuable. Um, the key is we want to 
restore that value back to filmmakers. And we think that's one of the super important things um, to take on. Um, similar to what it's exactly similar to what the music industry has seen over the last five to ten years, right? Um, you're now seeing major artists, uh, you know, self-distribute their titles. They're you know going directly to their to their audiences. Um, you know, Radiohead did it. Um, you know, it's like these are things that have been happening in music uh, constantly, but all of a sudden, you know, filmmakers are just seeing the capabilities of what it's like when you actually maintain your rights and work with it. Um, um, when you say market to platforms, what do you mean? This is an automated process or do you meet and talk about titles with platforms? It's a mix. Um, we're a data powered company, but we do uh, have one on one relationships with each of our streaming platforms. Some of them um, use, utilize our platform. Some of them we have to go and pitch individual titles to. Um, you know, the key is that we come back with data to them and use that. And so that's uh, so we do actually meet with our, our platforms. Um, at all times. Uh, Annette has asked, do we take uh, docu-series? Yes, we take all films, TV series, shorts, um, um, serialized content uh, of all types. Um, you know, we believe um, that you, you know, that it's really, you know, the key is to have every title available everywhere. Um, and so that's kind of how we think about it. Um, do you accept films within seasons only? Nope. Uh, we take it at all times, right? Christmas movies can, we sometimes have, we've had a uh, hoopla this past year who needed to do a Christmas special. Uh, they did a Christmas in July special. Um, we need to be taking those films at all times. Um, and so, you know, content is evergreen. Yes, there's certain times where sometimes it has a, uh, you know, a benefit, uh, but it's, you know, very important there uh, on that side. Um, Anonymous asks, would this be a first options or should you shop around first and then end here? We're focused on revenue share based deals. As you've heard, you know, the revenue share based, the, you know, kind of upfront license fees are becoming a thing of the past. You know, we believe that revenue share based is the future. Um, and that is the way that the industry is going. And the main benefit is as a filmmaker, if your title performs and you're in a revenue share based situation, you've made a lot more money. Um, if your title takes off, I mean, say for instance, you know, Squid Game, you know, net, you know, Netflix licensing to them. If it was a pure revenue, if it wasn't a revenue share based deal, the filmmaker could make no money because or they could make a, a portion of the money and all the benefit would go to Netflix if they had sold an upfront deal. Um, but if that filmmaker was on a revenue share based deal, it takes off a much higher opportunity for, for performance on the other side. And that's one of the things that's uh, very important. Um, Josh asked what's the financial structure of working with film hub um very simply um 80 20 revenue split so as we receive royalties on your films and we have industry standard rates we negotiate across all you know the different rights types so advertising video on demand transactional subscription um we take a, an 80 20 revenue split in our in our uh, platform um Good question. How does your 20% compare with what a private distributor might take charge? Most distribution companies charge typically between 30 to 50% of, rev of uh, royalties received and also deduct marketing expenses. Um, with Film Hub, we take a small 20% fee, um, which allows you to also handle all marketing on yourself. Um, we do not we do not do end consumer marketing. Our goal is to help you get up on as many streaming services as possible and leave you to do the work because you know your film best and finding your audience. Uh, one of the things we find is most traditional distributors claim to do marketing, but frankly do not. Um, and so one of the things is that's why we you know, believe in a smaller revenue share to empower the filmmaker to direct distribute and get to know their audience best. And this is the exact same thing, once again, that the music industry and one of the reasons that you know artists are doing so well in that is they're building their audiences and taking it with them uh, to work with them. Um, Catherine asked, do you work directly with filmmakers um, and do you have a criteria for working with film? The only thing that we are judging your co content on is making sure it meets the technical standards of the streaming service, streaming channels that we work with. We do not judge any sort of storyline, um, you know, content quality, et cetera. We'll let that be decided by the streaming channels. We don't think that we should judge that. We just want to make sure we have the right technical aspects that they require. Um, and that's one of the, the only thing that we judge a film based upon. Um, 
All righty, I think, let's see here, any new questions coming in? Let's see here. Cool. Um, what genres and types of stories are you seeing popularity right now or that readers are hungry, that channels are hungry for? Ultimately, all content. <laughs> it's, you know, I, people ask this question a lot of genres and like storylines, et cetera, blah, blah, you know. The thing is realizing that content is kind of evergreen and there's, you know, certain things obviously get, you know, have spikes. So for instance, you know, we distribute uh, Cryptopia, one of the foremost documentaries in, in Bitcoin by Torsten Hoffman. Um, you can listen to him actually on our podcast, Forward Filmmaker. Um, uh, he, if you, wherever you get your podcast from, he's a phenomenal filmmaker. Um, for instance, right, like the popularity of his film goes directly with the, the price of Bitcoin. Um, you know, as Bitcoin goes up, more people watch his film. Um, so, you know, it shows you that, you know, it just depends kind of on finding the right audiences and right times, you know, to market your film. Um, and go from there. Um, Cool. So Daniel Flint asks, how quickly can a completed film move from sale to audiences in the current stream market? We find that we can have films up on streaming services within a month at this point. It's, you know, and this is because technology at Film Hub, we've automated a lot of the distribution process, um, which is, you know, one of the more reasons why distributors and sales agents and filmmakers, uh, you know, work directly with us. Um, someone asked how long you can keep your film on Film Hub? As long as you want. It's always up to you. Um, and you always get to, you know, uh, remove it whenever you want. Um, someone asked, how much percentage of streamers do streamers typically take before Film Hub's 80-20 splits? Can you give us some examples? So there's a couple of important things to realize as we think about, you know, splits. Um, there are uh, three main models that Film Hub kind of works with. Transactional video on demand services, TVOD, pay for purchase, pay for rent. Those rates are anywhere from 50-50 to 90 10 depending on the services typically um, there's avod which is advertising video on demand which is typically a 50 50 split between the channel uh, and and the content provider um, and that's based upon the number the dollar amount of ads sold on the film and then subscription services are generally anywhere from like a five to 20 cent per hour viewed content or about a 50-50 split on gross SVOD revenue, which means you take the amount of like, the monthly amount of SVOD revenue, you split that in 50-50, and then attribute that 50% based upon the number of minutes watched that that, that title counted for. So if a, one title counts for, you know, 50% of the minutes watched, they get 50% of the 50%, and that's how that works. That's the general kind of revenue share based deals. Um, someone asked, why would anyone choose a traditional distributor over Film Hub? Ultimately, the only reason that we, you know, that we see is, you know, somebody may not want to handle marketing. Some traditional, some filmmakers want to have, you know, they want to hand off their film fully and not do anything for it. Um, so in traditional distribution, yes, you can, you know, that's one of the benefits is you have them handle marketing. Um, we think it's more empowering to be in control of that. And so we don't think that's necessary. We don't think it's right because we think that the filmmaker should really own their destiny. Um, but some people want that to happen. And that's the only thing that really kind of, you know, we see as a, as a, you know, kind of thing that you have to think about in, in how you're deciding what you want to do. Um, why did I start Film Hub? Um, so the story actually originally starts with my co-founder, Klaus. Um, Klaus is a, uh, World renowned composer, I said, wrote the music to Pirates of the Caribbean, Gladiator, um, and saw that, you know, he was surrounded by amazing filmmakers that were constantly reaching out to him saying, hey, I can't get distribution. I can't do this. You know, Klaus was blessed to work on, you know, multi hundred million dollar pictures in some instances. I mean, he's a pirate, you know, has been heard by, he's one of the most iconic songs of our, of this, you know, of our, our generation here. Um, but he saw that there were amazing films that weren't seeing distribution. And so he started working on this as a side project. Um, and then he recruited me on to join. I had a background actually in theater production. Um, I used to run a large theater organization in Philadelphia. Um, and, you know, really had an interest in the arts, but also 
uh, had an interest in technology. Um, and so it worked on both sides. Um, and so it really combined my two loves um, and helping, you know, filmmakers and stories get told. Um, I'm a Brazilian American. Um, you know, I've seen, you know, how stories can transcend cultures. And it's really one of the things that like drew me to this business and, you know, why I'm excited to help build it. Um, yeah. Um, another question was, are filmmakers able to select launch dates? So good question. <laughs> um, most streaming services now do not allow launch dates to be set unless there is a lot of money going behind what's called P&A, which is Princeton advertising. Um, and typically streaming services will want to see a very significant hundred thousand dollar plus kind of dollar amount to try to do that. Um, and the reason is because it frankly is not advantageous to the streaming service. Like they just want to get something up as soon as possible. And so this is a kind of the new methodology of how do you think about distribution? Unless you're spending a lot of money up front, the goal is you want to get it on a streaming service and then begin marketing, marketing, marketing to drive viewership. Most things, if you're driving marketing and they can't watch it and say it's coming soon, you've missed out on an opportunity of converting that person. And so that's why streaming services want you to kind of spend your money once you're actually live, because then they can actually drive direct viewership to that. Um, and that's one of the reasons uh, why a lot of streaming services don't uh, allow you know marketing go live dates. Um, is film have a replacement of traditional distribution or a tool to be used alongside traditional distribution? We can be used in both ways. Some people are fully replacing their traditional distributor. Some of it is used alongside. Um, it totally depends on what your strategy. So for instance, uh, Gravitas, who you heard from, uses us alongside them because they handle some stuff, we handle some stuff for them. It totally depends. The key is that we're non-exclusive. And so we allow you to you know, partner with other partners if you wish to, um, which you know, uh, speaks to our other point, um, the question of, do we, allow, do we work with theatrical? No, we don't work with theatrical distribution. Um, so that would be one instance where it's great that we are non-exclusive because we allow you to go manage your theatrical distribution via another partner. We're solely focused on video streaming market at this point. Um, do I have a recommendation for a good closed captioning service? We always generally recommend rev.com, super simple, easy. You generally should, you know, QC their work and make sure that's correct. Um, but that's, uh, you know, pretty simple uh, within that. Um, someone asked the question of how much can a traditional indie film expect to make? The ranges are significant, right? There are films that can make, we've seen make, you know, you can make millions of dollars, you can make $5, you know, it really depends kind of on, on where you are at um, and where, what kind of, you know, prints and advertising money you're, you're looking on. You know, Film Hub is, you know, we have titles on our platform, such as Project Gutenberg starring Chow Yun-Fat um, that grossed previously $180 million worldwide via theatrical distribution. The key is we're getting you access to the platform so you can actually be in an area um, you know, where you're capable of you know, significant monetization. But ultimately, the true monetization comes down to you, the filmmaker, and finding your audience. And that's key. Um, great. Cool. So I think within that, um, that is about wraps us up. We're coming up on time here, um, but wanted to say uh, a big thank you to everyone. Um, if you want to reach out to us, um, you know I do recommend uh, you can reach out to us, uh, you know, via support at filmhub.com. Uh, you are all uh, also I think uh, Luis is my team has posted a link to schedule a demo on the side. Um, so definitely recommend, um, you know, signing up for a demo. Um, and you can also go just directly to filmhub.com and sign up for an account today. Um, but I want to say, you know, big thank you to everyone here. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, wanting to learn more about Film Hub, um, you know, we'd be happy to chat with you uh, later after this. But I wanted to say thank you to everyone uh, and go from there.